Today, The Guardian had a live question and answer with Ed Snowden. People could leave comments, they could tweet their questions to Ed Snowden. And here's the take home money quote that came out of that. He was asked by somebody, how many sets of documents you disclosed did you make? And how many different people have them? If anything happens to you, do they still exist? And this is what he said. All I can say right now is the U.S. government is not going to be able to cover this up by jailing or murdering me. Truth is coming, and it cannot be stopped. Well, I certainly hope that is true. I hope that's true for his sake, and I hope that's true for all of our sakes. Now, he also said in this uh, question, back and forth answers on uh, The Guardian, uh, he was asked about the domestic use and the distinction that the NSA is trying to make between domestic and foreign spying. And he said, the NSA likes to use the word domestic as a weasel word here for a number of reasons. The reality is that due to the FISA Amendments Act and its Section 702 authorities, American communications are collected and viewed on a daily basis on the certification of an analyst rather than a warrant. Right? A warrant is what's required under the Fourth Amendment. But they didn't get a warrant when they got the data for 7 million Verizon customers. And of course, as William Benny has pointed out over and over again, that order that was publicized, that was leaked, was actually Order 8013. And he said from his experience, the 13 represented the year 2013, and 80 would have been the 80th order. They do these on a quarterly basis. So doing the math, that means that there were at least 40, maybe as many as 79 other orders that went out for that. So we have a lot of companies that they're putting these orders out on. Now, what he's saying here, and this is being said by others, is that the domestic distinction is nothing but a wiggle room to try to get around the requirements of having a warrant. He says, this excuse is an inc they excuse us as an incidental collection, but at the end of the day, someone at the NSA still has the content of your communications, even in the event of a warranted intercept, it's important to understand the intelligence community doesn't always deal with what you would consider to be a real warrant, like a police department would have to. The warrant is more of a template form that they fill out and send to a reliable, that means a compliant, judge with a rubber stamp. And then Glenn Greenwald, who was there with him on the question and answer period, followed up and said, when you say someone at the NSA still has the content of your communications, what do you mean? Do you mean they have a record of it or the actual content? And he says, both. If I target, for example, an email address, for example, under FAA 702, and that email address sent to someone to sent something to you, Joe America, the analyst gets it, all of it, IPs, raw data, content, headers, attachments, everything. And it gets saved for a very long time and can be extended further with waivers rather than warrants. So that's the whole purpose of the data center being built in Utah, Bluffdale, Utah. They want to store worldwide communications for hundreds of years, and they have the data capacity to do it. And once they do that, they'll be able to mine it every successive year. They will be able to go in and make more and more mining, data mining operations with more and more information. And how will they use that? They will use it to corrupt to blackmail, to even do corporate espionage. We've even seen reports that Palantir, who claims that their prison program is not the same one that the NSA has, they were implicated two years ago in a enemies list type of espionage involving the U.S. Chamber of Commerce. The U.S. Chamber of Commerce got them to go in and do data mining operations on people that were being critical of the U.S. Chamber of Commerce. We've seen how it was used against the director of the CIA. David Petraeus. Maybe he might want to rethink some of these privacy issues. Well, we don't see any protests going on, unfortunately, in America. But in Hong Kong, hundreds of people protested NSA surveillance over the weekend. In a story from InfoWars, it says, in a show of protest against U.S. surveillance programs and in support of whistleblower Ed Snowden, several hundred people marched Saturday to the U.S. Consulate General and the offices of the Hong Kong government despite drizzly weather. Shame on the NSA. Defend freedom of speech, chanted marchers who carried signs written in Chinese and English and wrapped in plastic to keep out the rain. Protect Snowden, another sign. 
the march, backed by five. How about that? They have a multi-party democracy there, unlike the United States backed by five opposition parties and 22 other organizations, included the presentation of protest letters addressed to U.S. Consul General Steve Young and the head of Hong Kong's government. Well, in the questions of USA Today to the three whistleblowers from the NSA, one of the unfortunate things about it was the whistleblowers, at least the parts of it that I saw, they kept trying to turn the discussion back to the actual issues the issues of legality, the issues of criminality, constitutionality, even the issues of effectiveness. You know, are you really going to find bad actors or are you just really trying to do a dragnet so that you can keep tabs on everybody like these German Stasi? As they kept trying to turn it to those issues, USA Today questioners kept turning it back and making it a personal issue. And we saw the same thing happen at Bilderberg. Once Bilderberg was out in the open and there was enough people, enough coverage that they could no longer ignore it without being laughed at. What they decided they would do is try to laugh at it, try to ridicule it, and make the subject the protesters that were there or talk about Alex being there rather than the issue. But here in Hong Kong, they focused on the issue, not just supporting Snowden, which is a great thing, but they also focused on the issue. And the issue is the NSA that is spying not just on Americans, but on foreigners. But it's not in America that people are taking to the streets to protest. It's only in foreign lands. Why don't Americans care about our freedom, about our laws, about our Constitution? Where are the Americans in the streets? I don't see them. Now you can watch Alex Jones live at Infowars.com forward slash show. You'll find links to all of our content there and a free 15-day trial for Prison Planet TV. You can also browse the network, the InfoWars Nightly News, and over 60 movies and documentaries all together in one place. You can watch the Alex Jones Radio Show live as it happened. So check it out, InfoWars.com forward slash show.